Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be looking at some of your summer containers for inspiration. I put out a post on Facebook and YouTube community just asking you guys if you had some containers that you really loved, that performed well, that you thought were really pretty. I asked you to submit photos, tell us just a little bit about where you live, like your growing zone, uh, and maybe a little bit of details about what was in your containers, and we got a lot of submissions. A lot. I know there were hundreds. Uh, we obviously can't go through that many in this video, so this may be part one, but I'm really excited to jump into these and see what we got. First one is from Amy in Minnesota, which is a zone 4A. Clearly, this Supertunia is loving its life, and what an interesting container. So it gives us an idea of something. I think Kinsman sells something like this. It's a company that sells a container that's up on a post. I have one out in the garage I haven't planted yet. Um, but what a wonderful idea because you can pop it anywhere. You don't have to have any ground space, no square footage on the ground. You can elevate it. And this plant is clearly happy getting enough sun. Uh, she does note a couple of things. Uh, Amy uses primarily Proven Winners plants along with a few rogue and interesting varieties that she finds along the way, same. And then a slow release fertilizer in each pot as well as weekly fertilizing with a balanced fertilizer. And you can tell based on the other pictures here from Amy's garden that the plants are responding really well to that sort of treatment. The super bells are absolutely gorgeous and that makes me very envious because super bells and I traditionally do not get along very well. And so these are healthy and robust looking. I really like this purple and white container because you've got the purple petunias with the white super bells and then that verbena in between has purple and white in it. So it just brings the whole thing together. And then the purple super bells with the orange super bells, that's such a beautiful combination of color and it kind of lends to both summer, spring and fall. Like that's a great combination for the whole season not to mention the hydrangeas blooming right below that arrangement. And the last one, a mixture of lavender, white, and purple again. Uh, looks like a petunia, a superbina, and super bells. Absolutely beautiful. Next one is Anne in Minnesota as well. Zone four, I absolutely love this one. I think it is such a brilliant combination of leaf color and texture. I mean, the only blooms we're seeing in this container are from the begonia, which is beautiful because the begonia has a dark colored leaf, which really contrasts that red bloom. But you see a mixture of houseplants in with other things that you find outside in a greenhouse, like annuals. So we've got a Sansevieria as that really striking centerpiece in the back, and then a bold croton. You see the Tradescantia, that purple and white variegated kind of coming out the front and the side, the Acarus grass, which I have outside growing as a perennial here. Um, and there's Creeping Jenny tucked in there. I just think that's really beautiful. And this is something that I would like to do more of is mix some house plants that you traditionally see inside as house plants in with my summer plants, especially in like window boxes, shady areas. I think it would be great. Um, this one, Anne does say that she fertilizes once or twice per month and it gets morning sun with dappled afternoon shade. Next one is from Ashley in Northeastern Illinois. And oh my word, I think that the, the combination of all these plants with the way the container looks, I think it's a really good, you know, sometimes you look at a planter and you think, well, maybe I could have done something different and complimented the planter better. This one, I think they're beautifully balanced. Uh, and Ashley gave us the names of everything that's in this pot. So I'm gonna run through that list because this is a gorgeous combination. Postman Joiner Caladium, there's one of those. Big, beautiful, uh, bold foliage there. There's three Trailing Lava Rose Coleus, which you can see kind of coming through the front with the little touch of pink, which kind of draws the whole thing together. There are four Whopper Rose Bronze Leaf Begonias in there. And you can see those definitely interspersed throughout. Four blue eyes fuchsia. Boy, she plants like I do. <laughs> she uses a lot of plants in there. Uh, three silver frost lamium and two asparagus ferns, which I can maybe see the asparagus ferns. Do I even see the asparagus ferns? I'm guessing that some of the plants maybe got gobbled up, which is usually what happens to me too, because we get carried away and put a lot of things in there. But um, she is in a zone 5B, fertilizes once a week with the Proven Winners fertilizer. And this planter is in mostly shade and is watered every day. Next one is from Brandon, who is from Indiana, zone 6A. I always appreciate a good grouping of containers and I appreciate terracotta pots with patina. So there's something very wonderful about this combination to me. And then the use of the fern. So you can see the back layer is a Boston fern just by itself, glorious, looks beautiful. And then there's a mixture of caladiums. There's a list here. 
Caladiums, Pink New Guinean Patience, some Hippo Rose Polka Dot Plant. And I like how um, the two pots that are flanking the fern mirror each other. That's really interesting. Um, there's an English Ivy in there, Rockapoco Orange Double Impatience. And then the one right in front has just a single mono, a mono planting of Rockapoco Orange Impatience. That's a really interesting mix of color and uh, texture. So this grouping of containers, he says, is in a sheltered north facing area that gets only about one hour of sun per day. Uh, so those plants are doing really well, not receiving very much light. So great inspiration for shady areas. The next one is from Clint in Louisiana, zone 8B. I love everything about this picture. I mean, the container, the plants, the brick wall, the door with the terracotta pots, the watering can is absolutely beautiful because it's mirroring the color with the copper and the terracotta. And then I like all white arrangements, all white with green, you know, different shades of green. It's just so peaceful to me. So Clint says that he used an Italian cypress. That's a centerpiece plant. There are two Supertini Vista snowdrifts in there and a Snow Princess Alyssum. That's something that I would definitely plant um, in my own containers. The potting soil used here was LSU Tiger Grow. And then fertilizer was Biotone when planting and then bi-weekly fertilizer with the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer. And it is in a full sun location and it gets watered by a hose if not by rain. Boy, I wish that was the conditions for mine. But I wanna look, zoom in on these succulent planters. So from left to right here, we got a sedum and some string of pearls. Looks like a purple echeveria tucked in there. Then we've got a panda plant, maybe a donkey tail in that one. And then we've got a crassula and then a mangave perhaps. I love that. I would love to know how that's attached to your wall. Do tell, Clint. Next one is from Desiree in Pennsylvania, zone 6A, and this one is glorious. Look at how full and beautiful and healthy these plants look. Also, the blurred out planter in the background looks pretty darn healthy too. I would love to know what's in that one. Uh, but in the top planter, uh, she said she can't quite remember exactly the variety name, but she's pretty sure it was a Supertunia Vista Fuchsia, and I would agree with that. That looks like a Vista Fuchsia. And then down below it, there are two. So three in the top planter, two in the bottom planter, along with two Main Street Coleus, which mirror the same pink color right in the middle of their leaves, and then one sweet potato vine that's purple color, bold texture down there. I love it. Um, potting mix that she uses, her own potting mix, she uses equal parts vermiculite, homemade compost, peat, and then added several scoops of Osmocote slow release fertilizer. That's really interesting. Um, the container is a Pamela Crawford planter. The top is a 14 inch wire pot with a cocoa mat insert and the bottom is 21 inches. I thank you for including all that information. That's so helpful because I know a lot of us would love to emulate this look or copy this look. And then it is fertilized with miracle Grow throughout the season and watered for 20 minutes per day uh, on drip system, 15 minutes per day or twice a day during the hottest part of the summer. So does that make sense? 20 minutes per day normally, hottest part of the summer, twice a day, 15 minutes each time. Next one is Diana, Michigan, zone 6A. Now I am partial to this because I have the same exact planter in what looks to be the same finish. This is the Galloway urn from Unique Stone. You can't really see the top of the urn at this point um, in Diane's arrangement anyway, because those begonias uh, I don't have a variety name for them, but they are absolutely massive, but perfect for this style of container. There's something about that pedestal. It's just so like refined. It's not really big and chunky. It just holds the plants up beautifully, really highlighting the plants. And the container itself is beautiful too, if you are actually looking at the container along the outsides of the bowl. Um, but equally as beautiful like this. So apparently there's a Browalia in there as well. I'm trying to look for it. I'm not sure that the begonias are letting the Browalia shine very much, but absolutely beautiful color of flower. Um, this one gets three hours of sun, water every other day, and fertilizer once a week. Next is from Donna in North Dakota, zone four. And this is a really interesting area because I think we all have areas like this that are a little bit difficult. We can't really figure out how to bring like vertical interest in or, you know, she said there was a lot of concrete on this side of the house and a really tall wall. So they have these shepherd's hooks that are each holding two 12 inch hanging baskets. And then the pots right below are 28 inch diameter. And that really added a ton of interest to that side of the house. I mean, it's just, I don't even really notice the wall. I just see the beautiful plants, especially those elephant ears. So in the 28 inch container, there's one elephant ear, one canna, which you can see of the darker colored leaves with the bright red blooms, 
uh, four supertunias, which look to be supertunia honey, four sweet Caroline sweet potato vines. That's a lot of sweet potato vines <laughs> in there. This might be a little earlier in the season, I'm guessing, or they're keeping them trimmed really, really well. And then in the top containers, which again are 12 inch diameter, there are two Calibracoa and two of the gold dust Mercadonia, Mercadonia. Um, and then there are two peachy keen verbenas in each one. I think that's a really beautiful mix of color. Really pretty. Those elephant ears though, holy moly, did those catch your eye. Next one is from Emily in Kansas, which is a zone 7B. And this one, it looks to be a window box attached to her porch railing, a beautiful mix of soft pinks, soft blue and white. So the centerpiece eye-catching plant here, they are white queen caladiums and my goodness are those big. Those are, they just have really bold leaves, I love it. There are hippo rose polka dot plants there. Uh, the Silver Falls Dichondra, which you can see cascading down and rose begonias, that is a beautiful blend. So these get morning sun and they're watered every three days on a drip system for 30 minutes and they get fertilizer, uh, Proven Winners water soluble fertilizer once per week. Next up is Janet from Minnesota zone 4B. I love this. So she left a comment that said, Laura, because of you, I started a gardening club at my children's elementary school school. So I'm guessing this is where the containers are at. She said because they have such a short growing season that she sticks a lot to cold tolerant things. So super tunias, pansies, gomfrina, ornamental cabbages, and kale, but also mixes in some of the heat heat loving stuff like basil, sweet potato vine, and marigolds. Um, they fertilize weekly with proven winners water soluble fertilizer, but boy, those are so eye catching. And I love the pink and purple combination. There's something very cool and relaxing about that color palette but my favorite and i don't know exactly what variety it is but that, that gonfrina is so striking it's so bright next one is jory from michigan zone 5b and this is a beautiful striking mix just because of the incredible contrast between the dragon wing begonias there and the impatience so the beautiful bright red with the bright crisp white and then you've got that fern kind of towering above it all. That's a really beautiful mix. So granulated fertilizer four times over three months is how this one is fed and it's watered almost daily. Next one is Julie from Minnesota, zone 4B. A lot of Minnesota containers here today, but this one is so bright and so striking. I love, love the coleus and the creeping Jenny and the begonia there in the front. We do have a list of actual uh, variety names for this one. So in this container, which is a 19 inch square container, there is one Riverwalk coleus, one Petticoat Neon Night New Guinea Impatient, one Magnum Blue New Guinea Impatient, one Stained Glassworks Royalty Coleus, one Magnum Hot Pink New Guinea Impatient, one Portofino Hot Orange Begonia, one Miss Malibu Begonia, and three Golden Money Wart. My goodness, <laughs> you really packed them in there. That's why I love it so much. Um, she did say by the end of the summer, the New Guinea impatience hadn't matched the vigor of the others, but it all filled in beautifully nonetheless. It is in a shady spot. It gets one to three hours of sun, no uh, fertilizer, none outside of the miracle Grow potting soil she used when she planted. Interesting. Next one is from Karen in Georgia, zone 8B. And I really, I find this one really interesting for two reasons. One, it's one fern. It's just one big glorious fern. And I always, when I see ferns thriving and looking beautiful, I always admire them because we have a hard time getting ours to look like that here in this dry, high desert climate of Eastern Oregon. Also, this fern is in a grill, like a barbecue grill. <laughs> so I think that is a super inventive way of reusing a space like that. And it just looks healthy and lush. So great job, Karen. Next up is Catherine in Texas, zone eight. A, and this is a stunning container, just absolutely stunning. There's pomegranate punch super bells, two of them in this container, one white knight uh, alyssum, which has done a really good job of kind of interspersing itself, and a Norfolk pine. I've never even thought to put a Norfolk pine as a centerpiece. And if I can get the two I have in my house to winter over and survive in being inside, I'm gonna do the same thing. I think that's such a wonderful texture and a really interesting centerpiece plant. The thing I find the most interesting though about this container is how good it looks after what it went through. So this is what Catherine says. I planted these things expecting to need to cover them during nights with freezing temperatures. But in February of this year, the South was hit with an intense winter storm. I had to move these planters into a shed with a space heater, especially to protect the tender Norfolk pines. With the Texas power grid issues, our house lost power for 24 hours. We were one of the lucky ones. Even at 30 below freezing, these plants managed to pull through without the heater running. 
The sheer resilience of this container under extraordinary conditions amazed me. While most years I may have swapped out my Christmas reds for softer colors, I couldn't bring myself to replace these troopers. I, that's so amazing that it went through what it did and it looks how it does. Next is Carrie in Massachusetts zone 6B and I love the carefree nature of this planter. It just has a very kind of natural look to it and I think it's because the centerpiece plant isn't very stiff or structured. It's got just more of a natural habit to the growth. There are variety names listed here. It's a lemongrass. Lemongrass centerpiece, that's wonderful. And then there are two super tunia whites that you can kind of see tucked in toward the back there. And, but it looks like you might be able to see this planter from all sides uh, based on where it's at in the garden. Uh, super tunia Bordeaux, there are two and two mini Vista Violet stars. So it gets sun from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it is watered on days that it does not receive rain and it's fertilized on a weekly schedule with water soluble fertilizer. I really like the soft purples. I think that's really beautiful. All right guys, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. There. We do have so, so many more submissions. And so we might be back with a part two, maybe a part three, I'm not sure. Thank you to everybody who submitted photos and just took the time to do that. It has been really neat to see all of the submissions come in. And we thought we could maybe make this somewhat of a series, not just the container gardens, but maybe we could do like backyard landscapes or flower, perennial flower borders, maybe water gardens, raised beds, uh, the skinny side yards possibly for some inspiration just to see what other people have done. Uh, so I would love to know what you guys would love to see. So maybe comment below this video and let me know what your suggestions might be, what you would like to see in future videos, and then we'll get on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who submitted your photos again, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.